What's up everyone? Today we are talking about structural balance and how to make sure that you that your training is developing symmetry in the body. Now, if you get this right, you're going to bulletproof your body and literally prevent injuries from happening in the future and even heal your old injuries. Stick around. How are you guys? I am Yanni Bullmeister. Across the table, I've got Rad with me. And behind the camera, we have the voice of God, Richard Lellies. Uh, we are Unity Gym and the Unify Movement System. Guys, if you want to know how we turn driven people into athletes, you got to get over to the UMS Movement Mastermind. Join our tribe. And also, you can download all of our blueprints from our website, from the description of these videos. And uh, they're available everywhere. How is everyone? Yeah, good. Feeling good? I'm feeling good. good. How are you, Richie? I'm feeling great. Feeling great. <laughs> Richie's about to get a mad upgrade on his uh, on his desk up there today. We're putting a couple of new monitors in. He's been running the show from one little laptop currently, and uh, yeah, he's excited. It's going to be so good. <laughs> so good. So good. Uh, if I look like I've got cream in my right eye, everyone, I do have cream in my right <laughs> eye. <laughs> Uh, I'm still I'm still coming back from this corneal uh, abrasion uh, cut on my eye, and I have to put mm. this disgusting stuff in it, and it looks a bit foul. Uh, those on the podcast will have no idea what we're talking about. Big shout out to the people on the podcast, and uh, big shout out to people watching on the YouTube channel. We're getting some love from YouTube again. Mm, we Can't are. wait to uh, uh, until we start rolling out our weekly workouts. We got a big plan for the next six months. Yep. Yeah, good stuff. We're uh, we're getting back into it again. Things are we're starting to regain a little bit of normality in our lives and our days after reopening after lockdown. And um, yeah, looking forward yeah, to moving absolutely. forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And flooding the gym that was a pretty yeah, pretty spectacular fun, moment this week. Yeah, it was. Uh, so today is a big day. Today we're actually cramming because because of the, the flood in the gym, we missed a day and we're cramming Thursday and Friday's shows together. We did Wednesday's show yesterday. We have, we have a set agenda that we want to try and get through and cover each week. So we deliver as much value as possible to all of you legends. And uh, today we're talking about both the development of structural balance in the body, and that uh, refers to few different things. Uh, the relationship between opposing muscles in a joint, uh, the relationship between your limb symmetry from left to right side, and also the relationship between the length and tension of muscles. So the flex, the balance in strength and flexibility to put it a little bit more simply. And then we're going to dive into how these things also relate to uh, what we sort of call injury proofing your body, there's certain areas of the body that are exposed to a lot of stress when we're exercising regularly, especially doing calisthenics and heavy weightlifting, uh, areas like the wrists, forearms and elbows, the ankles, knees and the glute muscles. I'm sure people can relate uh, to lower back and we also like to really condition the abs and core. And uh, so we've got a big show to get in with. Why don't we get started by talking a little bit about our experiences and how we do structural balance, Rad? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's funny. It's, it's such a um, misunderstood concept. It's something that even as trainers, it took us a very long time to put it all together. Like we've been learning about structural balance for over a decade but we only put it into a program that we're teaching to our tribe and to you know people online in the last couple of years and because i think it's i think you learn so many different things and you as a trainer you think how am i going to fit all of this into a workout or into a program and but it is can I, can I just pull you back there because that's totally not true what we, we've been structurally balancing people since 2006 no, we 2007 haven't. We, haven't, we, haven't, we haven't been balancing strength and flexibility for oh, longer than longer than a year yeah, yeah you're enough. right you're right well to the, get to the level yeah, where we're yeah. at now and if you look back yeah, at any right. of our if you look back at any of our programs it, we were doing structural balance left to right and agonist and antagonist for over a decade mm. but if you looked at the way that we were training people back then now yeah, you'd yeah, say yeah. this is a completely incom this is a evolved. incomplete way of training so and i think it comes from yeah it, it, it comes from i mean remember back in the day when we used to have these programs that we got people to do and they could barely fit them in in an hour yeah quite often 
we would get through about 60 or 70 percent and you'd you'd finish with your client with the one hour and you'd say all right look you just got to get these last two exercises done on your own and then do some stretching yeah right and then you'd see them sneaking out off the gym floor to train but, <laughs> but why not i mean they only had an hour to train yeah, anyway like they're yeah. on a lunch break or whatever yeah so you're you're telling them that they need to do a critical component of their training but it wasn't important but it wasn't important enough to fit in the one hour that they're paying you for yeah so it just sends this message to people that this isn't an important thing to do and when we say critical components we're talking about like like the exercises that come last in a program are usually things like you know rotator cuff stabilization you know scapula stabilization work grip work um you know balance work like w flexibility you know yeah. Yep. So the things the, that get just, just before you get started, mm. because I want you to share that um, in the conversation we had before we came on air, you put it really simply in regard to comparing um, the way a bodybuilder sort of trains to the way you train in a foundations program. We'll share that in a sec. First of all, I want to get the question of the day out because this is a re this is going to get some really great discussion going. I want to know if you're on the live stream, if you're uh, watching in the UMS Movement Mastermind private Facebook group, uh, I want you to share if you've ever worked with a coach or trainer who has introduced you to anatomical structural balance, the concept of doing... Some people call it a remedial program or a conditioning program. We call it a structural balance program. I adopted that uh, from the late Charles Poliquin. Um, I'd like to know if you've had any experience with this and how it went for you, you know, what, what the breakthrough was. Some of you may say that you've done our foundations program, uh, but if, you ha if you've done ours or someone else's, I'd really love to know. Uh, share it in the comments and we'll have a discussion about that at the end of the show. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Look, I mean, it's funny because, as we say, it seems so simple to us. But, you know, I was talking to one of our uh, longest members here, the ultimate athlete for, the, um, for last year, for 2019, Lachlan Husler, who's been with us now for almost five years. It's coming up to his five-year anniversary. He's about to turn 45. He joined us just after he turned 40. And that guy has just come so far. Mm. And not only has he, has he come, he's been on the show a couple of times. Um, so some of you might, have, might remember seeing him on the show. And he, he's just a, <clears throat> a walking advertisement for how, how great our program is. But I was, it was, it's funny because I, I actually asked him this morning, I said, um, one of our newest members, they were saying how they've never done a program before where they do strength and flexibility in the same workout. And they said they'd, they'd never even thought of doing it this way. And I was saying to them, oh, you know, it's funny, we've only actually been doing it like this in the classes for, for probably just a little over a year. And I asked Lockie because I couldn't remember exactly how long it was, but he's been here for it. And I remembered back, like we've been open at Unity Gym for seven years now. And Yanni and I were personal trainers for a decade before that. I had four years in the army during that decade period. And I, I, I actually remembered back, it was only about a year and a half ago where we didn't do stretching between sets. There was one day a week mm. where we did uh, about 40 minutes of stretching. And it was the, my goal at the time was I'm going to teach people what they need to know about flexibility so that they can do it on their own. Yeah. And guess what? No one did it outside of that one hour. I used to remember that people, uh, that was the, the one day a week that people treated as a rest day. Yeah. And, and hardly any people turned up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was when you sort of put stretching as a separate program, it's very few people turn up, except mm. the women. The, the girls always turn up because they love the yoga and they yep. love the, the way it makes mm. them feel. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just so frustrating. Mm. So if we, but if we go from, you know, so talking about structural balance, you know, if, if you want to do a program that is balanced, that's going to create, um, and what we mean by, by structural balance, it means it prepares your body in a way that you can do the things you want to do with a low risk of injury. If you don't have a structurally balanced body, then you may be good at what you do in the gym, but when you go out and try to use that strength or fitness or whatever it is in any kind of activity, you have a high risk of injury. And a classic example of this are the guys that go to the gym and they do hips of bench and biceps and, and um, uh, lat pull downs. Yep which are all training the internal rotators of the shoulder and they don't do they don't do anything that stretches out those internal rotators and that strengthens the um, scapular retractors and the external rotators and so they look buff they feel strong they get really really strong but then they go out and throw a ball 
and they don't have the strength to counterbalance that explosive force and they tear muscles in the shoulder. Yeah. And there's just so many stories of that and, and, you know, plenty of other like people, you know, picking up their kid at the beach and throwing their shoulder out and having to get surgery on it, you know, yeah. like these really big strong guys. So a structurally balanced body is a body that has balance. You're not, you, you aren't favored in one area and it's not just in strength it's from left to right side of the body it's from so if you play a, a almost any kind of a sport that uses a bat or a racket you're going to be very dominant on one side yeah unless you literally hit ball for ball left to right side yeah, you play ambidextrous yeah. yeah so if you go up to the baseball pitch and you and you hit one ball with your right hand and then you hit the next ball with your left hand which i don't think anybody's doing then you're going to be dominant on one side so your your weight training needs to counterbalance that yeah. your weight training needs to train both sides it needs to train pushing and pulling movements and it needs to train strength and flexibility and that's what we mean by structural balance yeah and, uh, and this, this is a breakthrough for a lot of people. And I want to keep this uh, discussion at a level that everyone can gain some insight. Uh, most people design their workouts and programs for purely for how they're going to present in a mirror or how they're going to look with their kit off or something like that. And so the obvious answer is, you know, and th th we used to have a bit of a j running joke in the gym that people, and that's why the chest, biceps and abs get overdeveloped in people because they're the muscles you can see in the mirror. Uh, and then the lower back glutes get neglected completely, uh, meaning that the core generally gets neglected. Yeah. Uh, this and is mostly for men. This is mostly for men. Women, yeah, it's usually yeah, yeah. a bit different the way yeah. they Yeah, and, and, and so, yeah, we sort of d d tend to, to prioritize and program based on what we can see and feel. And what we want to visibly you know, change. But yeah. what you were talking about earlier, when, before we came on in, re in relation to the difference between bodybuilding where we're basing our program methodologies on the, s the surface muscle yeah. that we can see, structural balance training and performance training sort of bases it on the joint and the function of the joint. Yeah, well, I mean, that even brings us into, into the next um, topic of discussion, which is to injury-proof your body. And the thing is, when you when you don't train for structural balance and you do the typical kind of weights training that people do that that's exactly what people are thinking of they're thinking of what muscles am i going to train today or what muscles do i need to develop but when you start training for structural balance you stop thinking of that and you start thinking about what joint do i need to train and when or, you start or what movement yeah or what movement yeah. you know well you know you think about um the, you think about, okay, I want to train my shoulder joint, so I'm going to do horizontal push-pull, vertical push-pull, and internal and external rotation. Yeah. Um, and even to a lesser degree, you know, abduction and adduction. But or those anti-stabilization. Yeah, or anti-stabilization, things like that. But you, you stop thinking about, oh, you know, it's chest day, I need to train my chest, or I've, I've got to train my biceps. Yeah. And you start thinking about the way that the joints work. Yeah. Um, and when you do that, you very very quickly start to feel better. People talk about when they start a structural balance program, it's a matter of weeks before they go, oh my God, my body feels better than it's ever been before. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this the other day, looking around the gym and all of our most senior students, all of our most senior members like Lockie, Matt, yep. uh, Lee, Leela. Leela um, these are all the guys that did the foundations program when they first started. Yeah. Uh, we, we ended up pulling, we used to make it compulsory for everybody because we knew that it was a really great way to start people off. But in the gym, it was really difficult to facilitate because there's the ego that you're fighting always. And when you've got a bunch of people doing a beginner structural balance program, what, what you know, people think of as a beginner program. It's certainly not an easy program. Don't, yeah. do not um, confuse the two. But it's, you know, you're not doing the big heavy deadlifts and the barbell back squats and things like that straight away. You're working unilaterally, you're doing all this sort of stuff. And, you know, people come in and they, they'd feel a bit ego crushed, you know, because we'd start them off on this foundations program and not, we had a very low, um, adherence to it uh, our, our churn rate was huge it was yep. astronomical because people would just get their egos crushed and yep. they'd see other people doing really advanced stuff and go I want to be in that group yeah. and yeah. you say no for 12 for the next 12 weeks you're going to be doing this foundation program we have the total opposite effect online when you're yeah. training online it's you versus you and there's none of that you know so mm. you just go through it and so we have a lot of people going through the program online with great success yep. but when I look around at the dozen people who are absolutely crushing it in our gym now who are the ones that everyone looks at and goes oh my god i want to be like that person they all did the foundations program yeah. every single one of yeah. them yeah and you know 
if you want to talk about is it a beginner program or is it an advanced program, there's um, a, a notable member in our online tribe now, Ben Lodge, who just did, I don't know, um, Ben, if it was your first ever one arm pull up, but what I do know is that a, a month or two ago, you posted videos of yourself doing eccentrics and asked me for some help for how to program. And then a month or two later, you just posted a video of yourself doing full one arm pull ups. So I don't know if you'd never done one before or if we just improved on what was there. But Ben is doing the foundations program right now and he's doing it to go back to the start, at, well, to the foundations to and iron out, iron out imbalances, the, the yeah. imbalances. But this is arguably the strongest upper body calisthenics member that we have in our tribe. If anyone else in our tribe can do one arm pull-ups, please post a video of yourself doing it because that is that is literally the ultimate expression of pulling strength. Like there's there's really nothing above a one arm pull-up for, for serious pulling strength, you know, grabbing your entire mm. body weight and pulling it there with one arm. Um, and he's doing the foundation program right now. So it is not a beginner program, but at the same time, if you're an absolute beginner that's never lifted weights before, there's nothing that would be better for you. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a great way to, um, if you've never done it before, it's a, it's a great thing to do. But if we go, Yanni, if we move on to the next topic of conversation, which is what you were saying about with the, you know, what I was talking about with bodybuilding, you know, when you do bodybuilding um, and when you go to the gym to lift weights, generally people are thinking about the muscles that they're training, which completely neglects the thought of what am I doing for my joints. An example of it is, most weightlifting programs completely neglect the wrists. Like people very rarely go to the gym and think, how do I train my wrists? They think I'm, I've got to train my biceps and my triceps. And so the muscles at the, um, from the elbow up become very developed, but from the elbow down become very underdeveloped. And it leaves the wrists very weak. Yeah. And you're only as strong as your weakest link. If you, you know, there's a lot of, you, I've seen a lot of people at the big chain gyms where they, when they do pull-ups, they use wrist straps. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, I mean, unless you've got unless a wrist you've injury. Got an injury, unless you've got yeah. an injury and you need to work around that injury, fair enough. But the only time we really use wrist straps at Unity. Or, or the other exception is uh, if you are in the top 1% in the world of elite power lifters and you're lifting ridiculous loads, hundreds and hundreds of kilos in your bench press, um, then, you know, during training, during bouts of training, when you're not competing, it might be worthwhile There's giving yourself a little course. bit of There's support. There's exceptions, of course. But you know, knee the sleeves person, and yeah, yeah, knee wet. sleeves and wrist sleeves, maybe, and elbow sleeves, maybe is is useful then. But for the average person, what Rad's saying, it's it it, it is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, you should be able to grab onto the bar to lift the same amount of weight that you're that you can lift with your lats and your biceps as you can with your forearms. Yeah. Um, and the same thing goes for the knees and the ankles and everything, you know, like you need to think of the way that every joint in your body gets trained, which is, it's, it's so funny. It's this thing that we cop the most flack for when people see that picture online of me doing the loaded Jefferson curl yeah. and people say, oh my God, that's so bad for your back. You shouldn't do that. And I think, why? So you, so you think you can lift a lot of weight in your arms and your shoulders and your knees and your hips, but not in your back. Mm. So what are you, are you strengthening? here up and here down but but this no 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 yeah. don't lift any weight don't strengthen the most <laughs> important part yeah. yeah it's just ridiculous you know you got to think of every joint in the body and how do you how are you going to strengthen it and that's what a good structural balance program will do and if you do that properly it is going to injury proof your body because your um, most injuries occur in joints right yeah like most injuries occur in joints it's it's quite rare that you get an injury that occurs between a joint that's usually a break um, you know, you might develop some uh, muscle strains or whatever, but the majority of injuries happen within joints. So, like the, most of what we see, in a, right? In and around the joint, the, yep. the, the, the muscle insertion uh, yep. or origin tears. Or, or the um, supportive the tissue. Or, yeah, yep. the, the deeper connective tissues yep. um, start to have problems. Yeah, that's right. Well, look, the one thing that, um, that I really wanted to highlight to give you guys a bit of context here is, you know, injury proofing your body, um, what what a good foundations program should do, and I still am really keen to hear if anyone watching on the live has had any experience with uh, with this, uh, it should condition and, and, and help to injury proof the areas of the body that take an extreme amount of load frequently. And the first and most obvious area is the forearms. The forearms are the area of the body, the muscles that control your gripping ability. And if you think about logically, if you think about it logically, 
There's not a workout that you do that doesn't require some form of gripping. It might even on a leg day, if you're doing barbell back squats, who who's loading the barbell? You know, you're picking up the weight plates and loading them onto the barbell. So there you grip you're using the gripping muscles, forearms, you know. And that's why um, tendinopathy in the forearms um, is uh, the mo- probably the most common gym um, injury, other than maybe a, an overuse uh, injury in the uh, or, or a an acute injury in the rotator cuff. And those are the two that I probably want to highlight the most here now for the last few minutes of the show because uh, the, these are the areas that I think most commonly get really, really neglected. In our, in our foundations program, the, the four key areas that we work on the most are the forearms, the, the rotator cuff, the knee and the hip, uh, how the knee works, uh, the, the, the VMO and the knee stabilizers, so calves, uh, gastroc, um, vastus medialis, oblique, and, uh, hamstrings. And, and hamstring and how that works in with the glutes to create stability for the knee so that you're really bulletproofing your knee. So we do lots and lots of sort of step ups and different style unilateral movements to create uh, a lot of strength in that area of the body, the hip and knee and uh, to stabilize. We do lots of conditioning, all different um, uh, movements in uh, supination, pronation, ulnar and radial deviation, gripping, crushing, pinching, forearm flexion, extension, and then all of the bicep um, flexion and extension movements for the arm. And then we do a lot of external rotation, internal rotation, scapular retraction, scapular depression movements for the shoulder and the rotator cuff. And these are the areas that you need to bulletproof. These are the areas that are going to end up struggling to cope with your big heavy bench press, your big heavy muscle ups, your big heavy dips, you know, your, your big heavy squats, uh, plyometric movements, and often, uh, you know, the thing that the, the, the weak link in the chain that breaks down the track if you haven't spent some time bringing them up, you know, yeah. and there's a constant and what, you know, what you learn if you, if you, uh, if you, the guys in our UMS will know this, anyone who's done our um, strength and flexibility essentials uh, course, the theory behind the program, you'll know that there is a direct relation, an inverse relationship between the joints and muscles in the body and the movements that need to remain in balance. And you, it's a constant process of mm-hmm. taking two steps forward in one direction and then having to take a few steps in the other direction to, to balance it out again, you know, uh, because as, um, as we always say, you can't run towards something without running away from something else. And and that often becomes the case when you're structurally balancing your body. Our, our whole program, our whole UMS program is de- derived around re- like f- um, training for balance, training for structural balance. That's what our UMS um, assessment protocol every mesocycle does. It retests, reevaluates, gives you some feedback on what you may have neglected or what you may have focused on, doubled down on, and how to, to program next for the next mesocycle to bring it back into balance or to stay in balance, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but at the grassroots level, a foundations program should teach you these concepts and uh, and also should provide you with a platform so you understand programming principles in general. And that's what we were talking about earlier yeah. on in the week. And look, the truth is, to wrap this up, we, um, uh, be, we, we get asked this question so often. Pe- we see people posting in the UMS Movement Mastermind and we, Yanni and I get a lot of responses to the emails that we send out. Uh, and people say, I don't know where to get started. I'm, you know, what do I do? How do I start this process? And we're going to today, we're going to offer the foundations program phase one for those of you that want to get started. So anybody that's been there's this is there's a couple of people that this is going to be for. If you're somebody that really is confused and you don't know where to start a training program that's balanced, that balances strength and flexibility, that's going to get your body ready for whatever you want to do later, then this is for you. And if you're somebody that's been trying some of our individual programs, if you've been getting some of our flexibility programs or our handstand program or whatever it is, and you're ready to go, okay, I want to know how to put this together into a workout that covers it all, that makes me strong, flexible, and fit, then this is for you as well. Yeah. And um, we'll make it available, of course, as always, for uh, 72 hours for this weekend at a really great price. And it, this is, I'm telling you now, if, if you're sitting on the sidelines and trying to piece together all the pieces of the puzzle that we talk about, 
this this is the ultimate program. This yeah. is it. This is this is where the real magic happens in our full UMS foundations program. Yeah. And let me be clear, anyone who does or anyone who's trying to do the foundations program or um, does decide to do it, everything else gets dropped. You put everything else aside and just focus on that one thing. You know, the foundations program becomes your one thing. Yeah. Uh, don't try to put a million things together because you'll just confuse yourself. You know, the, the, the foundations program covers everything from the flexibility training you need to do, the strength training you need to do, the mobility training you need to do. Yep. It's all inclusive in there. And where yep. people start to get a little bit uh, stifled is when they have maybe got a, a handstand masterclass mm. or something else that they're doing that they're working on and then they get that and then they go okay so how do i put it together now yeah you know you don't yeah just you focus, focus on the, focus on the one program. thing yep. you know and so you really understand how to do it and nail it and then we can talk about adding other things yeah that's right so we've got uh, a couple of our uh, tribe have commented here for the question of the day dave clark is saying for me you are the first to introduce a structural balance program the stretching between sets idea is genius. I see so many other members of the gym walking around or just waiting between sets, which sets, which is not as efficient as your programs. Absolutely right, Dave. Um, Tim Hughes is saying, I am three weeks into phase one, and after 30 years of training at the gym, I am amazed at how weak I am on my left side. Scapular depression and glutes compared to my right side probably explains the injuries I have had over the 30 years. It absolutely would be a, a contributing factor into that tim um for sure yeah th look i mean and this is the thing that a lot of people find when they start to do a, a program that works on balance instead of just uh, um, uh, aesthetics you know yep. aesthetically driven programs and this is my problem with them and don't get me wrong guys this was my entry into strength training i i trained like a a, a novice bodybuilder for a decade and it produced results you know like it yeah. got me through that first year but and and for the first four or five years it caused a lot of damage to my body because I had no clue what I was doing and it wasn't until I really hurt my shoulder that I started to go okay there's got to be some theory I'm missing here that 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 I didn't understand and that's when I started to pursue learning and development in how to actually put programs together and uh, and then became a personal trainer uh, but you know most programs most training it's it, you know it, it when it's when it's aesthetically driven there's no balance yep. you know there's no balance in, in, in not until you become a very very competent bodybuilder do you understand symmetry and do you understand balance and do you understand that there's a need for longevity because the guys that are competing at the highest level in bodybuilding they're not overnight successes they've all been working yeah. at their physiques for 20 years you know yeah. uh, that's why most of the top 10 olympia guys are in their 40s yeah. because it doesn't happen overnight you cannot you can't build that sort of physique in e even in a decade i don't yeah. uh, to, i don't know if you can you know yeah. because you you can get huge in a decade uh with the right stimulus and the right exogenous hormone therapies you can get massive and you see monsters come up all the time but they don't have the symmetry yeah and they can't stand on the olympia stage and get judged compa when compared to the guys uh like phil heath and 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 ben pokolsky and guys like that that have this amazing symmetry kai green you know yeah. And those guys get to a point where they understand, okay, it's going to take me a long time to achieve my goal of being in the, on the Olympia stage. I need longevity. And then yeah. they start looking, as a lot of them do. I know Ben did. I know a lot of the guys do. I know some of them don't. But a lot of them start to go, okay, this needs to become more methodical. I need to take care of my body, you know. And, yeah. uh, but that's, that's decades of practice. So you guys don't need to go through that pain, you know. <laughs> you, yeah. can, you can start doing it immediately. Now, you don't need to do what I did and train for a decade and just beat myself up and then realize that I was just not going to be able to keep training if I, uh, if I didn't figure out a better way to train, you know. Yeah. Thanks right. for sharing your stories, guys, um, and thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great week. I enjoyed doing this week, despite having flooded the gym and all the drama <laughs> we had on, in the background. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for all the amazing emails I got yesterday, too, in response to my daily email. I shared the story. Uh, and, yeah, remember what Rad said. Yeah. We're putting the Foundations Phase 1 on sale for you guys if you want to just see how it works. Um, you know, use it as a blueprint for your future training. It's just a great way to, to learn the fundamentals of programming too. Remember oh, what, you know. I'll teach you so much. Yeah. You'll, you'll learn so much from it. So grab it and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Yep.
Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're gonna have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's gonna get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.